Good morning and uh, happy Good Friday to everyone. Um, today we are again going having our online service, especially during the season, this special time that we have and uh, what we have this the whole issue of this whole crisis of coronavirus in town, trying to wash our hands to keep social distances. But also um, the church itself um, is not shut down. The church is still moving. And as such, today is Good Friday. And I think it is necessary enough to talk about the significance of the cross. We talked to you on last Sunday by the grace of God, and we talked about how Jesus triumphantly entered the city of Jerusalem, and there were people shouting and waving palm branches, and they're saying Hosanna, and we said the same people uh, are again today are going to change their tongue, change their tongue, change their attitude, and, uh, and they will say a different thing. Amen. Amen. So today we will be talking to you about the significance of the Christian cross, not just an ordinary cross, but the Christian cross. And that's what I want to talk about to you this morning. Amen. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for your people. Thank you, God, for people out there who are watching us today on this Good Friday. Mm -hmm. We pray in the name of Jesus as we, yeah, God, that you will cover us in the shadows of your ways. That you protect us, God. And dear Lord, I pray, Lord, that your people also, dear Lord, that are watching, dear God, will also, dear God, learn from your word today. And that hope, oh God, will be given. And dear Lord, people will not will not be afraid. We say thank you, Father. Bless you, God, in this morning for your faithfulness. Thank you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Good morning again. Um, as I rightly said, today we'll be taking our text from Colossians chapter 2. Um, one of the books that Paul wrote to the church of Colossia, Colossians chapter 2, verses 14 to 15. And I'll be reading the few verses this morning for our hearing. Colossians chapter 2, 14 to 15 verses. 14 to 15 verses of Colossians chapter 2. But for our understanding, I uh, will not just go to um, the texting chap, the texting verse, uh, the, or the fourteen verses rather, right, from fourteen to fifteen of Colossians chapter two, from fourteen to fifteen, it says, "Having worked out the handwriting of requirements, having worked out the handwriting of requirements that was against us." which was contrary to us. And he has taken it out of the way, having filled it to the cross. You see, let me read that again. It says, having wept out the handwriting of requirements that was against us, which was contrary to us, he said, and he has taken it out of the way, having nailed it, he nailed it to the cross. Amen. Amen. He nailed it to the cross. Verse 15. He said, having this own principalities and powers, he made a public spectacle of them, trumping over them in it. So, 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 so having taken all our transgression, our sins away, they are nailed to the cross. And Jesus disarmed principalities and powers. Hallelujah this morning. Amen. Now, I want you to also understand that Jesus Christ, he died for my redemption and for your redemption. So every Christian must understand that every single problem or that is faced by humanity was addressed by Jesus at the cross. 
So every problem, everything that we are going through, it strictly has been addressed on the cross. Amen. It's nailed on the cross. Principalities and powers are nailed on the cross. Even diseases are nailed on the cross. Yes, coronavirus is also nailed on the cross because Amen. by his stripes we are healed. Amen. And that's why I've come to you this morning not to be afraid. And let us talk about the significance of the Christian cross. The Lord Jesus Christ, he gave to the Apostle Paul the meaning of the new covenant which pertains to what Jesus did for us at the cross. Amen. So in fact, the meaning of the new covenant is the meaning of the cross. That Jesus he died for you and for me. Amen. In Romans chapter 6, he said, We are told as it regards the crucifixion of Christ, who suffered as our substitute, that we actually die with him in the crucifixion, were buried with him, and were raised with him in the newness. Of life. Amen. Jesus Christ served as our substitute. We should have died when he died for us. Amen. All the way to Calvary Cross, he went for you. He went for me. So as to set us free. And that's why the psalmist said, if we look to the cross, I mean the Christian cross. The cross, the Christian cross is the old rocket cross. It's, it is empty. There is no image on that cross because the, the Jesus is no longer on the cross. The cross is just a symbol, a symbol of our redemption. So Amen. no image is on the cross. Amen. The Christian cross is a plain cross. It is, it is empty. Yes, he went all the way to Calvary Cross. He went there for you and for me. Amen. My brothers and my sisters, this is a memorial. This is a time to reflect how he died for you Amen. and for me. Amen. Yes, he suffered on the cross for our redemption. He suffered so that we can be saved. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. After becoming a Christian, all the days of our life, we are to continue to look to the cross as a source of our victory. We have victory over all principalities and powers. We have victory through the cross of Jesus Christ because the cross is serves as our redemption. Amen. Yeah, we are not speaking to putting Jesus back on the cross. I'm not speaking about that or us getting on the cross either. But in fact, Jesus is now seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Yes, I will not stop here, uh, church. I will not stop here today. And if I don't just go through the words of the cross. The words, the seven words of the cross, Jesus said. Yes, he, he, when Jesus was hung uh, on the cross by, by, by his accusers, by the Roman soldiers, Amen. thinking that, 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 that nailing him on the cross, uh, it was all over. But I want to tell you, that was the beginning of the gospel Amen. to be spread throughout the world. Amen. Because he gave us a great commission. God has not given us the spirit of fear, but the spirit of boldness, of sound mind. That was he gave to us. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So we need to still look up to the cross. If you need anything, my brother, if you are going through life situations and life crisis, I want you to lift your eyes to the hills. From Amen. whence come your help. Amen. Your help comes from the Lord, the creator of Amen. heaven and earth. When Jesus was on the cross, he said in his first word when he cried out, it's in Luke chapter 23, verse 34. He said, Father, forgive them. Amen. For they know not what they are doing. It's a place of forgiveness. Have you trials and temptation? Is there trouble anywhere? You should never be discouraged. Amen. But take it to the Lord in prayer. Amen. My sister, my brother, I want to say to you, Learn to forgive. Amen. Because to forgive is divine. And to err is human. Hallelujah. Amen. 
Jesus said, Father, forgive them. So he was speaking. Because his father, his father will, will, will turn his back. Uh, his father turned his back. And I saw the blood. Oh, yes. He said, forget them. In these crisis, in these situations, you are still keeping grudge. Amen. I think the coronavirus should be used as a medium again to reconnect families. Amen. Have you called your family member? Have you sent them a text? Have you checked on somebody? Amen. You need to hear from your people to know. But making striking out a call. Amen. Sending a text means you are still in contact Amen. with your family. Have you talked to any of your family members this morning? Have you called anyone this morning? Amen. I know they fight you. I know they, they went against you. But you want to pay a debt? Is that why you are saying no? Jesus said, forgive them. I want to also say to you, there was a man also, two were on the cross along with Jesus. And uh, one was a thief. One was a, a robber, something like that, I think. But he said, in, in St. Luke chapter 23, verse 43, he said, today, the second word, you will be with me in paradise. So, so it doesn't matter how long. You just stay long in the alley. Today is the day of salvation. Amen. It's not how long. It's how well. Amen. He said, today you will be with me. If God has no respect of presses. So true. God is no respecter of pressing. God can use who he wants to use. And so God, in these times, I think we need, because crisis too can be used. You know, pandemic can be used to bring people closer to God. So I think this time too should 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 should, should make us to get to come closer and closer to God. Amen. Yeah, I heard a song one time when I was singing. He said, I'm one, I'm two, I'm three, I'm five thousand miles away from home. Amen. Oh yes. I love the Bible verse of one of my sister Teresa Mumbo that she always say in in, 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 in our, our, our prayer time, she when we, when we cover Bible verses, she will say, draw near to God. And he will draw near to you. You see, so we need to get very much closer to God. Hallelujah. Amen. The twelve were on the cross. It just in John chapter nineteen, verses twenty six to twenty seven. Say, woman, behold thy son, and son, behold thy mother. And that's that day they took the disciples took the the, 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 the mother of Jesus to their house and took care of her. Behold, how are you now treating Amen. your parents? Is there anyone now who is serving? Some people still are in the church. I'm God mother, God father, God mother. And, 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 and not knowing, they're doing different things. Amen. Have you, you have you remember your God mother, your God father in this crisis, in this time like this? I mean, not biological. You don't have to, someone I'm born you biologically. I mean, now what I'm talking about. Or you can be of service to someone. Like what I was saying on last Sunday. So true. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, St. John 19, 30 says, I just about the sign, the night hour. Jesus said, I trust. He was not trusted physically, but spiritually for me. Because man was so much far from God. Amen. For us to get more closer and more closer to our God. Amen. Doing his signs. Jesus said, Jesus, he's not there for us. But he didn't understand. He gave him a drink, a vinegar. Amen. Then the fifth word he said, Eo, Eo, Lama, Sabatini. My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? In Psalm 22, he said, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Jesus was quoting the scripture. Amen. My brother, he was speaking as a man. But as God, he was not forsaken. Hallelujah. Amen. St. John 19, 30, he said, now, after he, he shut up, he said, it is finished. Principalities are all nailed on the cross. Powers are nailed to the cross. So true. It is finished. He Amen. Said. And lastly, he bowed down the head and gave all the ghosts. 
Yes, sir. Father, it's in, John, it's in Luke chapter 23, verse 46. Bow down his hand and say, Father, into thy hands I commit my spirit. So true. My brothers and my sisters, during this crisis, this pandemic, this situation in our country, let us remember that, and let us also understand that our single problem we have is being nailed to the cross of Jesus. Amen. Let's look to the cross. Let's get closer to him during this time. Pray more. Amen. Make sure follow the routines. Follow the health procedures. Amen. Give social distances. Keep washing your hands. Mm -hmm. But also remember, keep praying. Amen. Keep praying. Amen. Because if there's a man to pray, mm -hmm. there is also a God to answer. So true. As you are praying, it is my hope that God will cover you during this time. Amen. That God will protect you during this time. Amen. Because he needs you for your service, as we said last Sunday. Amen. And let us see the significance of the cross. The significance of the Christian cross is stands for our redemption. Amen. That through him we are redeemed. And our sins and principles and powers are all nailed to the cross. Amen. My brothers and sisters, as you observe today's Good Friday, I just want to remind you that the nails didn't kill Jesus. So true. <laughs> the crown didn't kill Jesus. Amen. The spear on the side didn't kill Jesus. Amen. Yes, those that tie him didn't kill Jesus. Amen. Jesus willingly gave himself as a ransom Amen. for my redemption. So true. So look to him and be saved. Amen. Thank you. And God bless you. Amen. 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 Father, I pray that you will, oh God, guide your people during this time. Mm -hmm. Cover us with your precious blood as you have shared it for our redemption. Okay. We say thank you. Thank you, Lord. That we learn to believe in you. Mm -hmm. Learn to know you more and more. Yes. Thank you. Indeed, during these times, dear God, we should have a greater family reunion. Man. Again, getting more stronger in our family ties. Calling one another. Amen. I pray, Lord, for Christians around the world, for people around the world today, Father, I pray that you will, dear God, cover us on the shadows of your ways. Amen. Thank you for your protection. Thank you, Thank you for your divine power. Mm -hmm. Do you be the glory and honor. I know, God, this too will pass away. Mm -hmm. May the Lord bless all of us in mm -hmm. Jesus' name. Uh -huh. Thank you and God bless you, brother.